The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, your landlord in this mansion of terror... And often there's no terror quite like those nameless terrors, those undercurrents we can't put our finger on. We know something's not quite right, but we don't know why. It nags at those dark corners of our mind. And such is the story we have for you now. All seems to be sweetness and light. But watch out for those dark corners, those things left unsaid. Jane and Mike Slater are young city dwellers spending their vacation in a quiet village called Granville. They thought it was the perfect spot to get away from it all. That's what they thought until they got there and tried to get away from it. Mike, we should have turned left back there. No, 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 no. We're on the main road out of the village. No, we're not. Look up there. There's another dead end. Well, this doesn't add up, Jane. We've been driving for a half hour trying to get out of this town. Every road is either a dead end or it takes us right back into the middle of the village. But we came in on the main road. Where is it? Why can't we find it? I think they don't want us to find it, Jane. We're trapped. Trapped in this town, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but they don't want us to get out. <laughs> mystery drama, The Summer People, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you say bud, you said a lot. A lot of things, like a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Let's say this beer, Budweiser, is the king of beers. When you say Bud, you've said the word that means you like to do it all. When you say Bud, you say you care enough to only want the king of beers. Budweiser's always been the king of beers, and always will be, for one simple reason. It's quality taste. And that speaks for itself. Hear it talking? When you say Budweiser, you said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Open up your eyes, take a look around you. There's a lot of world you've never seen. Just about every two minutes somewhere in the world, a Pan Am jet is either taking off or landing in 96 cities in 65 countries on six continents. So the next time you're taking a trip abroad, instead of wasting time trying to figure out which airline goes where, fly Pan Am, America's airline to the world. Welcome to our world. If you're planning a trip to Europe, Pan Am once-in-a-lifetime trip to Europe can get you discounts on hotels, meals, car rentals, and many other things. So if you're looking for a European vacation, call your travel agent for a reservation on Pan Am. Two weeks in another town, a summer place. They all add up to a change of scene something everyone enjoys. And for Jane and Mike Slater, a summer in the country was not only desired, but almost necessary. Jane is a serious painter, and Mike's a young reporter with a novel burning in his brain. A couple ripe for spending their vacation away from it all and working on their respective art. 
So it was no wonder that when Mike picked up the paper one evening, he enthused. Hey, Jane, listen to this. Mm, what? I think it's just what we've been looking for. For our vacation, I mean. Private rooms with bath in lovely private home. Quiet village on beautiful river. Complete peace and quiet. All meals, $50 a week per person. $50 a week? What's the date on that paper, 1910? It says 50, unless it's a misprint. Restricted to persons 23 years or younger. Well, at least we qualify there. Interested parties may phone for interview. 814 on the number. Interview? Oh, sounds too snobbish. <laughs> it sounds intriguing to me. Well, doesn't the ad say where it is? No, nope. nothing more. It's a perfect place to spend the summer and start the draft on my book. It's okay with me if you want it. But phoning for an interview, isn't that strange? Well, whoever put the ad in had his reasons. We won't know unless we call. Coming. Uh, Mr. Slater? Yes. You're Mrs. Williams. That's right. Oh, we've been expecting you. Oh, but our chat on the phone, you sounded like the right kind of people. Come in. Thank you. Oh, what a cozy place. Jane, it's Mrs. Williams. Uh, that Dutch clock must be an heirloom. It's my great-grandmother's. Mrs. Williams, hello. Uh, Mrs. Slater? Uh, sit down, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, you may think this a bit unusual that we request an interview... Yeah, frankly, yes. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Slater, we in Granville are... Well, we do invite the summer people into our homes. There are no hotels, and we want to be careful. I mean, we want to be sure our summer people will fit in. Your ad said only people under 23 years old. I think that's curing one, so you should. But we're a young town, Mrs. Slater. Oh, Granville's been a village for 230 years, but the people are young. We stay young. And we want our summer visitors to be the same way. Uh, how old would you say I was, Mr. Slater? Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't put me on the spot. Oh, would you want to guess, Mrs. Slater? Well, since you asked, uh, 40? 42? Oh, I'm 79. 79? Oh, you can't be. Well, that's the way it is in Granville. We've found the secret for keeping young. And we want our summer people to enjoy us just as much as we'll enjoy them. <laughs> it all sounds great to me. We're quite self-supporting, but we do depend on the summer people. That's why we're willing to take the trouble to meet our prospective visitors personally. Um, you're both in good health? Oh, yes. Uh, no recent illnesses or operations? Would you like a blood sample? Oh, come on, Jane. Well, this is ridiculous, oh, Mike. Mrs. Slater, I understand your reaction. Many people feel the same way, but if you're willing to cooperate with us, just these few questions, you won't regret it. Just where is Granville, Mrs. Williams? Well, I'll give you the directions when we decide on your visit. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Slater? Well, I'm a writer. I'm, I'm a uh, news writer for the Post. Jane goes to art school. She's working on her master's. Oh, you're both artists. Oh, well, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> uh, the reason I was interested in your ad is uh, I want to spend the summer blocking a book, and Jane wants to paint. And it sounded like just the place. Oh, I'm sure it will be. I can tell from meeting you both. So attractive, healthy, young. You fit in with Granville just Perfectly. If we choose to come. Oh, but why wouldn't you? You haven't told us enough about the town or your home. You've been concerned in making sure we'd fit in. Maybe we couldn't from our point of view. Oh, well, you, you do have a point, Mrs. Slater. Uh, but I'm afraid there's not much more to tell. Granville is a pleasant little village on the banks of the Sakoni River upstate. I can offer you my second floor suite... And the friendship and attention of all the residents of Granville. We'll think it over. Uh, I'll call you in a day or two, but I'm pretty certain we'll be there. Uh, very well, Mr. Slater, Mrs. Slater. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and I do hope you'll decide to come to Granville. You're just the kind of people we want. Thank you. Forgive my reservations, Mrs. Williams. We'll let you know. I'll be waiting. Good night. Good night. 
What's the big deal, Jane? It sounds perfect. I don't know, Mike. There's something strange. The things she didn't or wouldn't say. Yeah, well, that's all the more interesting. I'm dying to see the place. <laughs> we're okay on her list. Oh, yes. She seemed eager to have us. I'm not against it, Mike. Let's sleep on it. I'll probably feel different in the morning. <laughs> In there, Martha? Come on in there. How's Elizabeth? Oh, she's okay. Uh, Dr. Teal said it was indigestion. Hmm. The way she was carrying on, I thought it was a heart attack. <laughs> How'd you make out with the uh, summer people in the city? The uh, Slaters? <sighs> They're perfect. Two of the best I'll ever have. I hope they decide to come. Oh, they're uh, not firmed up yet? Uh, the wife was a little leery of my questions. They mm. didn't call me. Well, what about the basketball player? Oh, he's all set. He didn't seem to mind at all all the questions and restrictions. Said he couldn't wait to soak the basketball season out of his bones in peace and quiet. I sure hope the Slaters come. I hate to start looking again. I think they will. I impressed them with the age thing. Mm. What'd they say? Oh, like everyone else, they guessed around 40 and were amazed when I said 79. <laughs> Imagine what the summer people would say if they knew how old we really are. I wouldn't believe it, so um, why tell them? It can't be much further. We passed the lily pond two miles ago. Oh, she said two miles past the lily pond, look for wooden sign on right and take road to the left. Well, it's been two miles unless my odometer's wrong. There. There it is up ahead. Oh, yeah. The arrow sign. Granville, four miles. But well, where's the road? Well, it's supposed to be on the left. Well, the sign points left, all right. Granville, four miles, but there's no road. Unless they mean those two ruts through the field over there. This is crazy. But I guess we'll have to see where they go. Okay. But talk about being off the beaten track. <laughs> We're getting just what we bargained for. Well, it looks as though it gets better up ahead. Yeah. Yeah, there's at least some paving up there. You know, if it weren't for that sign back on the highway, you could go right past this place and never even know it was here. <laughs> Well, this looks more like it. There is a town back in here. Welcome to Granville, population 210. <laughs> How can they be so accurate? After meeting Mrs. Williams, I can believe anything. Why, Mike, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's clean, all right. Nice-looking houses, too. It's almost unreal. It's so perfect. Uh, where do we head next? Oh, uh, continue along Thimble Street, that's what we're on, to the greenhouse on Maple Avenue. Well, that can't be too far. Hey, look at that, Jane. That little church. There's something to paint. My first subject. I wonder where the river is. Well, we've got plenty of time to find it. Oh, Mike, this really is paradise. We made the right decision coming here. I think so, too. I, I can't wait to... What's the matter? But where do we go from here? I mean, we're at the end of Thimble Street, and so far there's been no Maple Avenue and no greenhouse. We must have passed it. We were talking too much. I've been watching every street. We didn't come to Maple Avenue. Well, we'll have to ask. I'll go in that little store. Uh, ask the fellow coming out. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, could you tell me how to get to Mrs. Williams? Oh, sure. You are the uh, summer people. She's expecting you. Yeah, the direction said uh, straight on Thimble to Maple Avenue. Oh, you passed Maple one block back. Go back, left on Maple, by the green house. Then about a quarter of a mile, you find Mrs. Williams on the right. Big yellow house with a green porch. Oh, thanks so much. I can't see how we missed Maple Avenue, though. My name's Ned Broker. Glad to have you with us. I'm uh, Mike Slater. It's my wife, Jane. Mm. See you later. Thanks for the direction. What a pleasant man. It proves Mrs. Williams' point, I guess. Granville stays young. Well, it's nice to know we're not staying with a bunch of old fogies. 
Hey, they seem to be anything but that. Uh, Mrs. Williams and that guy back there, at least. Oh, there's the greenhouse. Maple Avenue. I don't see how we passed it before. Well, go left like the man said. A quarter of a mile and we'll be at Mrs. Williams. Hello. I've been waiting for you. Here we are. Well, I wasn't sure when you'd arrive. You know, we only made one bad turn. Not bad for newcomers. Mr. Broker in the village told us how to get here. Oh. Well, uh, come on in and get settled. Your rooms are all ready, and I've got a pot of hot coffee and homemade apple pie all waiting. Like I said, this is paradise. Your rooms are on the second floor. I'm expecting another guest toward the end of the week. He'll have the third. Your place is just charming, Mrs. Williams. That's exactly what we wanted. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy it here. The whole town seems so fresh and clean. The people look so well. We're very careful about how we live here. We grow all our own vegetables. Meat's imported. Oh, you love our food. Well, here you are. Two rooms with connecting baths. It's lovely. Now, this is great. Well, you get settled in and then come down to the kitchen. I want to introduce you to some real Granville cooking. You in there, Martha? Come on in, Ned. Ah, your, uh, your folks settled in? Hmm, just about. Yeah, you were right about them. They seem like the right type to me. Mm -hmm. I know how to fix them. When's the next one arriving? At the end of the week. I told the Slaters I'd drop around and see them settle. Oh, stay for pie and coffee, Ned. They'll be down in a couple of minutes. I'll show them around town tomorrow. Are the girls a painter? Uh, that's what they said. Well, she'll be looking for subjects. I'll know what to show her. Yes. And what to keep her away from? <laughs> Charming people in Granville. Hospitable, friendly, attentive. But I can't help feeling... Oh, no, no, it's just my overly active imagination. There's nothing wrong, nothing sinister. How could there be with such lovely, youthful, healthy people? And yet... Well, we'll return to Granville when I return with Act Two. This is Beverly Sills. Did you know that of all the arts, music is the only one in which a blind person can participate freely in spite of blindness? However, even in music, the blind needs special help in order to stand on an equal footing with the sighted. The Lewis Braille Foundation for Blind Musicians works to promote the interests of the blind in the field of music. The foundation, a national non-profit organization, urgently needs your financial help. The services of the Lewis Braille Foundation are available to any blind person and provide auditions, evaluations and counseling, scholarship aid, paid engagements for qualified musicians and transcription of music into Braille. The foundation depends solely on the public for its support. Send your tax-deductible gifts to the Lewis Braille Foundation, 112 East 19th Street, New York, 10003. If you know a musically gifted blind person who needs help, please contact the Lewis Braille Foundation at area code 212-982-7290. In this world of charge cards and more charge cards, is there a card that saves you money instead of spending it? A puzzling mystery? No. It's the Northwest card from Northwest Federal Savings. The Northwest card gives you lots of things for nothing, like traveler's checks, register checks, and notary service. They're all free of service charge. Or gift checks, laminating ID cards, or Xerox copying at no charge. How can you get your Northwest card? It's yours just for keeping a balance of $500 in your Northwest Federal Savings Account. And it's that simple. The Northwest card. Because Northwest Federal is in business to help you save and has been for 50 years since 1925. Come visit. Irving Park, west of Cicero, in Des Plaines, Norwich, and now Arlington Heights, at Algonquin and Golf Roads, where it's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. Ah, 
I did say we'd return to Granville, where Jane and Mike Slater have decided to spend some time in late summer. He to start a book, and she to pursue her painting. But, uh, frankly, that town gives me the willies. If you don't mind, I'll just stay here and meet you later. You go on ahead and join Jane and Mike in the kitchen of that friendly Mrs. Williams. You might even get a piece of that apple pie. Another slice, Mr. Slater. Oh, no thanks, Mrs. Williams. It's delicious, but two is my limit. Oh, now, come on. A young fellow like you ought to be able to put away a whole pie. <laughs> He's being polite. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take another one, Martha. Help yourself. I understand you paint, Mrs. Slater. There's plenty of subject matter here in Granville. Well, that's what I was hoping. I'm dying to look around the village. I'd be glad to show you around. Well, I'll be glued to my typewriter most of the time. I'm glad Jane has a painting to keep her busy. Well, you you want to rest up today. Why don't we start out tomorrow? Fine with me. From what I've seen already, I know we couldn't have found a lovelier place. I've never seen such immaculate farmland. Mm, we grow everything we eat. Uh, let's walk on down to the riverfront. The view there is something. Oh, what's that low brown building over there? A factory? No. No factories in Granville. That's our freezer. We freeze the harvest for the winter months. One of our few concessions to modern gadgets. Oh, you have such an idyllic place here. I'm surprised you want outsiders at all. Oh, living too closed up isn't good either. We like the right kind of summer people visiting us. Gives us perspective. Mrs. Williams is so warm and friendly. You'll find everyone in Granville that way. So, how is the Grand Tour? Beautiful. It's a beautiful spot. Almost too perfect. Everything's laid out just so. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing really. It's just curious. I don't remember seeing any children. Not a single child. Well, maybe they're all grown up. Uh, everyone seems to be proud of how old they are here and how well they look. But a whole village without any children? Yeah, that's unusual, yeah. What's the difference? Well, none, I guess. To us, anyway. I'm going to start on Mr. Broker's barn. It's so unique. Mrs. Slater, lunch is ready. Thank you. We'll be right down. Oh, I don't really feel like any lunch. Hey, that breakfast she poured into us would last me a week. Oh, the food's fantastic, but we can't hurt her feelings. I know you're going to like it here, Mr. Egan. Oh, I can see that already. Peace and quiet's all I want. Oh, well, you're on the third floor. A nice young couple has the second. Oh, Oh, uh, Mr. Slater, hello. Oh, hello. This is Mr. Egan and Mr. Slater, our new resident. Hi. Hi. Uh, Mr. Egan's a professional basketball player. Right, recovering from the season. And Mr. Slater's a writer, his wife's a painter. We're sort of on a work vacation. Well, you won't see much of me. I'm just going to sleep and eat. Oh, that's what I like to hear. I'm afraid the Slaters aren't used to my big meals. Yeah, the food's great. There's just, uh, there's just so much of it. Well, it's my duty to keep our summer people well fed. Uh -huh. You won't have any trouble with me, Miss Williams. Well, now, come along. We'll, uh, we'll get you settled. I'll uh, see you later, Mr. Slater. Oh, hey, I didn't mean that the way it sounds. <laughs> Call me Mike. Okay, I'm Tim. See you later. The, uh, basketball player all settled in? Uh, yes. Eh. Hey. Guess I'd better get out to the main road and take the sign down. We won't be expecting any more for a while. Not for a while. Well, how's the painting coming along, Jane? Oh, I don't know, Tim. I started out with a bang, but lately I haven't been able to concentrate. Can I look? Sure. Well, that's two weeks of work. Mm hmm. Looks good to me. Oh, it's all there, the barn and the sky and the field, but it's just there. There's no spark. I don't know, I've been so lazy lately, I, I can't get up steam. <laughs> I'm the same way, and enjoying every minute. <laughs> it must be Mrs. Williams cooking, and this country air. Oh, hi there. 
didn't know you were back. You finished for the day? Yeah, I can't work up any enthusiasm. Yeah, you know, that's my problem. Talk about writer's block. I've been staring at that typewriter for a week. I'm beginning to wonder if we came to the right place after all. We wanted peace and quiet to work, but between the food and the climate, we're growing fat and lazy. Oh, well, it suits me fine, but I'm going to have to take off ten pounds before the new season starts. How did you happen to find this place, Tim? Oh, uh, just an ad in the paper. Yeah, same as we did. Did uh, Mrs. Williams give you a personal interview? Sort of. She came to my apartment, took one look at me, and gave me directions to Granville. Didn't you think it was funny they made such a fuss about meeting us? Well, yeah, I did, but she was so nice, and this Granville sounded so great, I didn't care. I just wanted to get away. You know, I didn't even tell my fiancé where I was going. <sighs> Have you looked around the town, Tim? No, I've done what I said I'd do. Just sit, eat, and sleep. Hey, Jane, there's no need to bring that up. What's that? Well, Jane thinks that uh, there's something unusual here. Tim, oh. there's not a single pet in town. Everyone in Granville is a youthful senior citizen. Oh, well, there's nothing odd about that. I was in Florida one time, and there were these old this people. This isn't an old people's retirement community. It's a plastic village. Everyone's very charming and gracious, like mannequins. Hmm. Well, I still don't see anything wrong in that. It just bothers me. Why are they so anxious to have us come for the summer? They say they need their summer folk. For what? Well, the money. I mean, they don't have any industry here. They just, uh, they just need cash for some things. The money? Fifty dollars a week for the two of us? What are you paying, Tim? Twenty-five. It's not the money. But this lethargy. We all have it. I think they're draining our strength in some way. Oh, come on. Don't make such a big deal out of nothing. <laughs> I'll see you two at supper, okay? How about some homemade ice cream? It's already in the kitchen. Oh, uh, thanks, no. Uh, no, no thanks, Mrs. Williams. Yeah, I was just going to take a snooze. Maybe later, Miss oh, Williams. well, whatever you wish. Is there when you want it. She was listening. She heard what we said. Oh, I doubt it, Jane. Look, if she thought we suspected her of something, she would have said so. Not necessarily. Not if there was a good reason for us not to know. What's up, Martha? I don't think the Slaters will be staying the whole summer. Mrs. Slater's particularly nervous. Hmm. What you going to do? I've advertised their rooms, Mr. Egan's too. Oh, he was due to leave the end of the month anyway. Well, okay, if, uh, if you're sure you can get replacements. Three summer people aren't enough. I know, but I won't have trouble filling the room. Hello there. Hi, Mr. Egan. Out for stroll? Well, I just like to watch other people work. Getting ready for the barbecue tomorrow? Yep. Real great time, our July barbecue. It's a lot of work, but we think it's worth it. Well, I'm glad I'm going to be around for it. Say, Mr. Egan, I wonder if you could help me later on? Sure. A couple of chores that could use your muscle power. Oh, any time. Tell me where and when. Well, I'll come by for you at Mrs. Williams'. This evening. Well, don't make it too late, though. I've been hitting the sack earlier and earlier. I never slept so good in my life. <laughs> oh, we'll all be bedding down early tonight. With the barbecue and dance, nobody will be going to bed tomorrow night. More corn, Mrs. Slater? Oh, yes, maybe just one more. Another round of steaks are on the grill, too. What a shame Tim had to miss them. Yes, too bad. I'm so surprised he didn't say anything to us before he left. Well, when Mr. Egan got the phone call last night, he said it was an emergency at home. He just grabbed his things and ran. He seemed very upset. That's so curious because he... Uh, I thought... What, Jane? Martha, want to give me a hand with these? Oh, be right there. Uh, help yourself to salad, Mr. Slater. What were you going to say? I'm wondering who could have called him. I remember him saying he didn't even tell his fiance where he was going. May, uh, may I have the honor of a dance, uh, Mrs. Slater? Oh, I, thank you, no. 
No, please, I couldn't. Go on, Jane. I'm too full. Maybe later. Well, Martha, it looks like us uh, old folks have to show the youngsters how to have fun, huh? <laughs> My arm, Mrs. Williams. Delighted, Mr. Broker. Excuse us. Just one dance and I'll be back for you, Mrs. Slater. <laughs> hey, Jane, we might as well pack up and go back to town tomorrow if you're going to act like this. I'm sorry, Mike. I... There's no reason for these suspicions. But do you want to leave? No, no. You have your work to do. Well, I'm not getting anything done. I mean, maybe we'd better pack it in. No. I won't say anything more about it, Mike. I'll get back to my painting tomorrow and try to enjoy the rest of the summer. You ought to be back writing instead of watching me paint. I don't see why you're unhappy with this painting, Jane. You know, it's Mr. Broker's barn to a T. I have a new idea for it. This morning I hit on what's wrong. What? Well, all you see is the outside. You don't feel a whole barn in the picture. It's because I've never bothered to look inside. What do you mean? Come on. Mr. Broker won't mind. Even though I'm not going to show the interior, if I know in my mind what it looks like, I'll give the whole painting more character. That makes sense. Hmm. It's the first barn I've ever seen with no dust on the windows. Door's not locked. Not surprising. Mrs. Williams never locks her house. I don't think any of them do. Yeah, well, let's go get that mood you're after. It's clean as a you-know-what. Yes. What's the matter? It's too clean. Whoever saw a barn without any hay or harnesses or just plain junk? Oh, yeah, there's a loft. Maybe there's some junk up here. Oh, hey, be careful climbing that ladder. It's steady. You see anything? <laughs> Sorry. No plain junk, but... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? I'll be darned. For heaven's sake. Look at this. It's the sign. It's the sign we saw out on the main road. Oh, maybe it's one like it, an old one. No, no, no. It's the same sign. It's the one that pointed to the two ruts through the field. Why would Mr. Broker have it in here? Hey, without this sign out there, you could go right past that field. Go right past Granville and never know it was here. Is that what they want? <laughs> Maybe your suspicions weren't so wrong, Jane. Oh, Mike. What does it mean? I want to ask some questions. Look, don't let on we found this, huh? Come on, let's get out of here fast before Broker gets back. Let's leave this town right away. Yeah, I only hope we can. Tim Egan did. Oh, did he? You were suspicious about that sudden departure. Now I'm beginning to wonder. He departed, but I'd like to know where. How are things in Granville? Uh, you'll forgive me for not going along with you, but maybe now you know why. I much prefer to stay here and let you tell me what's going on there. I'm dying to know what happens next to our friends Mike and James Slater. You'll be able to fill me in after you return to Granville shortly in Act Three. Isn't it nice to know you're free? To see the things you want to see. To touch the heights you dare to reach. To know you're all that you can be. In the Free Spirit Department, Buick's midsize 1976 Century has a lot going for it. Efficient size, lots of room, neat things like that. But Century offers bonuses. It's a Buick, remember, which says one heck of a lot about how nicely it takes care of you. And Century does something for the sake of efficiency that no other American midsize car does. It comes with a V6 engine and a Buick V6 at that. Century. The spirit will move you. This is WBBM Chicago. Right now, you can save money on the light bulbs you'll need this winter when it stays darker longer. Here's all you have to do. Look for the Truth Value Hardware Store's Fall Shopper Circular and clip the money-saving coupon for General Electric Frosted Bulbs. 
Take the coupon to your participating True Value hardware store and select a pack of four frosted bulbs in 40, 60, 75, or 100 watt sizes. You'd usually pay 46 cents each for these bulbs, but with the coupon, a pack of four frosted bulbs is just 97 cents. True Value hardware stores have other GE bulbs too, like Soft White Plus, decorative bulbs, fluorescent tubes, and appliance bulbs. Stock up now on GE bulbs and save money too. Get a pack of four GE frosted bulbs in the size of your choice for just 97 cents with the coupon from the Fall Shopper Circular. General electric light bulbs are just a few of the values you'll find at the participating True Value hardware store near your home. you want to return to the odd little village? Well, if you insist. And don't say I didn't warn you. Mike and Jane Slater have finally awakened to the fact that Granville isn't all it's cracked up to be. Jane felt it first. And now Mike, having found that Granville can shut itself off from the world with them in it, decides Jane wasn't so wrong after all. The thing that makes me curious and perhaps you too, is why. Why do these sweet townsfolk of Granville appear to be increasingly sinister? I hope you'll be able to tell me when you get back. That is, if you get back. What kind of danger are we in? I don't know. It's so damn maddening, I don't know. Do you think it's even safe to go back into the house? Oh, well, we've got to get our things from the car. Well, tell Mrs. Williams that we've got to leave sooner than we thought. Won't she be suspicious after Tim Egan's disappearance? Hey, I'd like to find out if that guy really went home. Oh, forget about him. Let's get ourselves home. Right, there's Ned Broker just leaving Mrs. Williams. He probably knows we've been to his barn. Don't let on about anything. Well, good morning, you two. Rested up from last night? Oh, yes. Yeah, still stuffed, though. <laughs> Been putting the finishing touches on that painting, Mrs. Slater? Yes, it's finished, as a matter of fact, and uh, it's a present for you. Oh, now, Mrs. Slater. Oh, please, take it. Well, thank you. That's real special. Uh, put it over my mantle. Uh, sorry to run off. Got the chores at home. Uh, that's okay. See you around. Bye now. I don't know why I did that. Oh, you didn't like it anyway. Listen, the phone. Maybe we can sneak up the stairs while she's on the phone. Hello? Oh? Oh, oh, Slater. Oh, yes. It's for us. No, no, they never arrived. I was expecting them the 1st of July. That's right. They were taking the second floor for the summer. I called their apartment in the city twice and didn't get an answer. I... I assumed they changed their plans. My... I wish they'd let me know. I could have gotten other tenants. And you haven't heard from them since they left the city? Oh, dear. Well, I wish there was something I could tell you. Yes. Yes, perhaps you'd better. All right, goodbye. Mike! She's gone into the kitchen. Mike, this is unbelievable. We are in danger. I don't know what or why. We have to get out of here. Don't let on we heard that conversation. Don't do anything to make them think we're suspicious. We've got to give ourselves time to... Time to make an escape. Why would she say we weren't here? That we'd never arrived? So they can do whatever they intend to do with us. That, that, that call had to be from Stu Hendry. He's the only one I told where we'd be. He must be frantic. Well, I've got to call him. How can you? There's got to be a public phone in the village. Uh, Mrs. Slater, Mr. Slater, lunch is ready. I couldn't eat a thing. Try. When I slip into town and call Stu. <laughs> Mrs. Williams, uh, could I use your phone? Well, of course. <laughs> I couldn't find a public phone in town. Oh, so that's where you were when I had lunch ready. You didn't have to go all that way. All you had to do was ask. My phone's right here in the parlor. <laughs> I only want to call my publisher about my book and... I'll reverse the charges. All right, just help yourself. I'm going to a friend's for the afternoon. It's our backgammon day. And uh, help yourself to the refrigerator. Mrs. Slater hardly touched a thing for lunch. Henry here. Mr. 
Who? It's Mike. Mike, where the hell are you? In Granville. Listen. What? Why, I just phoned there, and some dame told me you never arrived. I know. Listen, Stu, we're in danger here. Danger? What? I don't know what it is, but Stu, listen. This is important. Jane and I are leaving here in a couple of minutes. We'll call you as soon as we're out. If you don't hear from us in one hour, I want you to get all the police you can and get up here to Granville. Well, how do I find the place? Take Route 47 north to Minerville, then Route 11 west two miles, and look... Oh, no, 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 no. The sign won't be there. Look. Ah, you look for two ruts across a... F Stu, do you hear me? Stu? Stu? Damn, they know. Jane! Jane! What is it? Is everything packed? Yes, I just finished. Oh, we're leaving now. Mrs. Williams went to a friend's. Hurry. What did Stu say? We were cut off and it wasn't any accident. Grab those cases. I'll take the trunk and the typewriter. Oh, I'll be so glad to get out of here. I'll kiss those hot city sidewalks. But this is our only chance. Someone was listening in on my talk with Stu. I just hope we can make it in time. I'll get the door. Wait. Anybody out there? Not a soul. Okay. Let's go. Do you think they're watching us? I don't know. Just keep walking and we'll, we'll load the car. There's nothing they can do to stop us here. They don't seem to have any guns. None that you know of. All right, uh, help me with the trunk. That's it. Now the case. Okay. Get in. Still not a soul on the street. So much the better. Where are you going? You should have turned right. No, no we've got to get back to Thimble Street. We came in through Thimble to Maple. It's it's left on Thimble. Oh, I guess that's right. You know, the green house, remember? Yes, there it is. Only, what's that sign say? Well, that was Broad Street. Well, there wasn't any Broad Street when we came in. Well, it's probably the next one. Uh, keep going. I can't. We're coming to a dead end. Well, we'll have to go back. Try turning right on Broad Street. Oh, gee, this is getting crazy. We turned left coming in. Turn right here. Okay. Oh, this looks right. This takes us right out onto the main road. Oh, thank God. Mike, we should have turned left back there. No, no, no. We're still on the main road out of the village. No, we're not. Look, look up there. It's another dead end. We've got to go back and take the road to the left. Oh, this doesn't add up, Jane. Look, we've been driving for a half hour trying to get out of this town. Every road's either a dead end or it takes us right back into the middle of the village. But we came in on the main road. Where is it? Why can't we find it? They don't want us to find it, Jane. We're trapped. We're trapped in this town, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but they don't want us to get out. <laughs> Back at Mrs. Williams. Oh, all roads lead to Mrs. Williams. I don't know what to do anymore. Driving around is useless. I'm going to confront that woman. I'm going to find out what's going on. Then we'll never get out of here. <laughs> Again, I have to say, I don't know. Come on. We're going to wait for Mrs. Williams to get back from her backgammon. Mr. Sater, uh, Mrs. Sater, something wrong? Uh, very, Mrs. Williams, very wrong. I, I don't understand. I saw all your things in your car as I came in. We're leaving, Mrs. Williams. That is, we're trying to leave. But why? Well, you, you ought to know. You listened in on my phone conversation. You know now that we're on to you, all, all you lovely people in Granville. On to us? Oh, come on, Mrs. Williams. We're prisoners here. We know it. You know it. Why? That's what I want to know. Why? Uh, Mr. Slater, if you want to leave, I think you'd better. I've never had guests act as strangely as you. All right. What happened to Tim Egan? And why was the road marker hidden in Broker's Barn? And why? Why can't we find our way out? Every street's changed since we came in. For a half an hour, we drove in circles trying to find the road we came in on. Mr. Slater, if you want to leave Granville, I'll have Ned show you the right way. It's no secret. Uh, Ned will be over in two minutes. Have your coffee. You've nothing to worry about, Mr. Slater. Mrs. Williams, 
I guess we've seemed awfully strange. But things have happened here that we don't understand. Oh, I know. Mr. Slater enumerated them. I have some more coffee. All right. I guess I'm feeling better. Uh, Mrs. Williams, you know, we, we've enjoyed your hospitality. Maybe we're making a big deal out of nothing. Of course you are. I can't see a thing we've done to make you think we want to harm you. Well, you know, I was, was, trying, was trying to get out of town. And the road marker, like uh, you, you were trying to hide us. Oh, we... Uh, well, maybe our imagination's got the best of us. Well, maybe we, maybe, maybe we ought to stay the rest of the summer, Jane. We've, we've chased away the boogeyman. No, I'm afraid it's time for you to leave. I'm sorry, too. I don't think you've got enough of my good home cooking. Martha, you in there? Come on in there. I think they're uh, about ready. Hmm? They each had two cups. I do hope you got some replacements coming. A new couple tomorrow, two more on the weekend. Good. Uh, Mr. Slater? Uh huh. Mrs. Slater? Mm -hmm. When do we go home? Uh, I'd uh, better get them over to the freezer. Oh, dear, I wish I'd had more time to fatten them up a bit. Oh, you did fine, Martha. Same as always. Oh, I hope so. It's my job. Well, I'll get them packed down. and Then I'd better get that sign out again. Don't want to miss the folks tomorrow. Uh, be right there. Oh, hello. Uh, hello, uh, Mrs. Williams. We're the Reynolds. Oh, of course. I've been expecting you all morning. You didn't have any trouble finding the place? Oh, no. Oh, well, come on in. Rooms are all ready. You're on the second floor. Lovely couple just moved out. I know now why you're so particular about your guests. This home is so beautiful. Well, yes, we have to be. Oh, my, the, the whole town is just a picture. I just know we're going to enjoy it here. And we're going to enjoy you. We stopped at that little store in town to ask directions, and everyone seems so happy and healthy. It's so, so youthful. Like you. We just can't believe you're 79. Uh, well, we keep young in Granville. The secret's in our diet. We're very particular about what we eat. It's all in the diet. Oh, your health food fat is. Well, we do raise everything we eat. I I hope you brought good appetites with you. It's my job to fatten up my summer people. <laughs> I warned you not to go back there, but you went anyway. You can spare me the details. I know what went on there in Granville. Suffice it to say, a trip to Granville is a one-way trip. But I'm glad you got back safely. Relax and order anything on the menu. I'll be back shortly. Some 3,000 calls a month like this one come into the National Gun Tracing Center from law enforcement agencies throughout the country requesting information on guns used in crimes. Hello, this is ATF with the gun trace request. We check with both national and foreign manufacturers and forward the dealer's name to the requesting agency. In some cases, we can do this in a matter of minutes. I will hold. I'm sorry to report that the owner said the gun was stolen about six months ago, and he forgot I'm Rex to Davis, it. director of the Bureau of That's Alcohol, right. Tobacco, and Firearms. Thank gun you. tracing is often the only means of solving a crime. If you secure your gun against theft, you make our job and that of your local police that much easier. Place a complete description of your gun with your other important papers, and if your gun is stolen, report it at once to the police or ATF. Remember... Your stolen gun threatens everyone. I do hope you won't make the mistake of ever returning to Granville again. You're lucky to have gotten out with your skin. I can tell you one thing. You wouldn't catch me dead in the place. But you will find me... In this same place tomorrow, with another menu of suspense, mystery, and horror. 
Our cast included Tony Roberts, Jennifer Harmon, Grace Matthews, Leon Janney, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The thing is, Doug, well, I've been made a Class D spirit. A Class D spirit? Mm, it's, it's all very fair. All according to the regulations. See, a Class D spirit has to walk the earth. That's the way it's always been. What is a Class D spirit? Well, we're people, well, well former people, whose murders have yet to be avenged. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see Shakespeare's Hamlet, or you must have? Oh, yes, of course. Now, now that Hamlet, that Hamlet was a good boy. Not very bright, maybe, but a good boy. His father got murdered, and he couldn't rest a minute until the murder was avenged and his father could get out of Class D. Pop, you died of a heart attack. Dr. Peterson said so. He signed the certificate that way. <laughs> Don't you believe it, son. Your Uncle Stanley smothered me with a pillow. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>